All right, I hope that everyone can hear me okay and see everything okay. Um, my name is Caitlin Kreps. We're gonna get started in a, in a minute or two once everyone kind of starts um, entering into the space. Um, I am an assistant director here in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions at GW. And I'm gonna be giving a quick presentation today about 30 minutes or so uh, about our special program. So this is not a general information session. Um, we do have those available um, on our website. So um, you can actually go just Google Journey to GW and um, that page Journey to GW will show you all of the options that you have to get to know GW. Um, and the general information session is on demand and you can watch that at any time. Um, I, like I said, um, am an assistant director here um, in the undergraduate admissions office. Uh, and I'm also joined by um, one of my colleagues. She is a regional director in our office, Lee Stork. She is based in New Mexico and works with students in um, the Western United States, especially in California. Arizona, New Mexico, uh, and I work with students in Texas, Colorado, Kansas, and Oklahoma, but we have um, colleagues that work with every student uh, in every state in the U.S. and all over the world, and so you can also go to that Journey to GW page to find your admissions rep for GW as well. Like I said, this program is going to just be about, or I'm sorry, this information session is just going to be about special programs. So that's what I'm going to dive into now. Um, and we have um, uh, several special programs I'm be talking about at GW, but something that I want to break down first before we jump into special programs, because this is very important, is that we have two campuses. So um, something that you might, if you've already watched our general information session or been to campus, you might know this, um, but in case you don't, I'm going to just give you a quick rundown of our two campuses. So we have our Mount Vernon campus, which used to be Mount Vernon College and Seminary, and that was acquired, that campus space um, was acquired by GW in 1999, and it is in the Fox Hall neighborhood of DC, so it's still in DC, but it's in a more residential neighborhood than our Foggy Bottom campus. Um, both campuses are connected through a um, a shuttle system called the Mount Vernon Express, and it's a bus system that shuttles students back and forth 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, the ride is about 12 to 15 minutes, depending on traffic, um, and many of our special programs are on the Mount Vernon campus. That's why I wanted to highlight that campus, um, and it uh, is home. I'll, I'll show you which ones it's home to later, but our Foggy Bottom campus also houses some of our special programs. And our Foggy Bottom campus is uh, where most students live um, and take classes. But like I said, they're very connected campuses. Every student at GW takes classes on the Mount Vernon campus as well. Every student takes university writing there. The, the Foggy Bottom campus is the more dense urban campus experience. So, um, these are the special programs that I'm gonna be talking about today. We have six of those. Um, we'll also be talking later about how you can apply to those on the Common App. You'll see them kind of um, available to you when you apply to GW. Um, but the four that are on the Mount Vernon campus, which I mentioned is kind of the more, uh, in a more residential neighborhood, it's more known of being the kind of like small liberal arts style campus with the rolling green hills and the trees and the green grass. Um, that is home to our politics and values, women's leadership, uh, honors program, and civic house. And our Corcoran scholars and Cisneros scholar students are really more based on the Foggy Bottom campus. So the first program that I'll start with is our university honors program. Um, this is, I think, a program that students often seek out um, because maybe they were in advanced placement classes or IB program when they were in, in high school, and they would like to continue that kind of like rigorous coursework and challenging coursework. And while we appreciate students that want to pursue that, that's not necessarily what our honors program is all about. It's not necessarily for students that just want harder classes or 
or want that kind of like honors designation when they graduate. This is for students that have an in, uh, a very intense intellectual curiosity in many multidisciplinary areas. So uh, a phrase that the honors program likes to use when describing their students is um, ac um, academic omnivores. They, like, they kind of like to taste everything. Um, they really like to dive into really interesting places in which um, academics overlap each other in different um, study and how those academic areas or majors or courses, how they interact with one another. And so that's really what intellectual omnivores is what it's called. Um, and the, the honor students, it's, it's about that kind of community, student, a community of students who are interested in lots of different academic subjects um, and how those academic subjects interact with one another and not just rigor um, and harder classes. This is our, one of our only four-year programs. So a lot of the other programs I'm gonna be talking about are first year um, for just the students first year, first year on campus. But the honors program is a four-year program um, that's available to you. Um, you can also apply once you're on campus. So let's say you don't get into the honors program as a freshman student or a first-year student. Um, you can actually apply to the program um, when you're on campus as well to get in as a sophomore. Now, um, you are required to write two supplemental essays to get into the honors program. So once you select honors on the common application, the, um, the common app will prompt you to write those additional essays. So just make sure that you write those because students that don't include those supplemental essays will not be considered for the honors program. So our next um, program is the Elizabeth J. Summers Women's Leadership. Um, and this is a program that was born out of the mission of the Mount Vernon College. So um, Elizabeth J. Summers uh, was an educator who started the Mount Vernon College um, for women. And it was a time when women could not be or were not allowed to be educated in some of the other institutions in the city or in the area. And so um, when Mount Vernon College closed and GW acquired that campus space, uh, we uh, wanted to continue the mission of Elizabeth J. Summers in celebrating women in leadership and in educating women leaders. And so that's what the um, Women's Leadership Program is all about. There are 80 women that or people, um, you can actually be a student that identifies in any gender that can apply to the Women's Leadership Program. So there are 80 students that are accepted into um, the Women's Leadership Program every year. It is only a first year commitment. And if you're accepted into the program, you would live in Summers Hall with all the other WLP students. That's also something I forgot to mention about the honors program is that it's also a living learning community like WLP where students are in the academic program, but they also live together. Um, and that just creates a really special environment and it's a way to utilize and build community as soon as you get on campus because not only are you taking classes with all the students that you're in these programs with, um, but you're also living with them. Um, and I know WLP has graduate assistants that also live in the residence hall. So they're a wonderful resource that is just right down the hall from you. Um, and in addition to living together with those 80 students in Summers Hall on the Mount Vernon campus, um, students also have access to a weekly symposia, which is a special event that happens every week where um, students might go out to discover some new um, art gallery in DC or um, go to a performance or have someone come and speak to the group. They've had um, a former presidential speech writer. They've had ambassadors. They've had um, kind of high ranking leaders in the military come that are leaders in their field that are women um, and they come to that symposia. So you have access to um, some of the top women in their fields coming to talk to those groups and just seeing how 
um, they have operated as leaders and making connections across the city and in your program as well. Um, and there are four cohorts. There's international politics, um, globalization, economics, and business, international arts and culture, and science, health, and medicine. And so when you apply to the Women's Leadership Program, you would select which cohort that you would like to be a part of. So politics and values, um, just like the other two programs that I've already talked about, is also living learning community where you get the benefit of studying alongside the same students that you're living with in the residence hall. Um, these students also live in Summers Hall where the WLP students live. Um, but the politics and values program is about political theory and the exploration of political theory. So it's not so much based on modern politics. So, um, and, but that's not to say that students that are in politics and values don't have an interest in modern politics and um, policy. Um, but this program is more based on, you know, the reading of primary sources um, and kind of where political theory and where modern, modern political thought has come from and exploring those origins. It's also a really writing intensive um, program. So it's a great way, like let's say you're really interested in law school or you just want to kind of bolster your writing skills or you think you're a great writer and you want to kind of explore that within the context of political theory, this is a, a really cool program to explore and apply to. And this is also only a first year commitment, just like WLP. So Civic House, um, like the others, is another living learning community on the Mount Vernon campus. Um, but this one is based on service. So um, kind of how you know, students that are interested are intellectual omnivores might be interested in honors, students that are interested in the advancement of women as leaders might be interested in WLP, or students that are interested in um, political theory might be interested in politics and values. Students that are interested in engaging in their community and service might be a really good fit for Civic House. So these students uh, basically spend their time in the program creating um, service opportunities and engaging in service opportunities with students that are also interested in those same things. Um, but it's also a great way to, like I mentioned for the others, tap into a smaller community at GW as soon as you get on campus. So sometimes when you go to a university in a big city or that has 11,000 undergraduate students, it can feel very big. You don't really necessarily know where to start or how to make connections. Being a part of a living learning community like Civic House, or maybe you have a very um, passionate interest in service is a great way to connect with people that also have that passion. Um, they also have monthly Civic House Saturdays where they do a large service project together. Um, and this is also a, only a one year commitment, but a lot of the students that are engaged in Civic House go on to create more service opportunities throughout their time at GW and engage within the DC community with service as well. So uh, the next couple of programs, uh, Corcoran Scholars and Cisneros are a little bit different. So I showed you, um, I'll go back to this first slide or one of these first slides. So this is, an, this is kind of a visual breakdown of where these programs are. We've talked about the first four programs um, that are based on the Mount Vernon campus and have a living learning component. So Corcoran Scholars does not have a living component connected to the program. Um, it is more of a um, scholarship cohort. So these students um, either need to be majoring in some sort of art and design major or want to major or minor in theater, dance, or music. And there's going to be some sort of portfolio or um, audition requirement for these students that apply to Corcoran Scholars. Um, so you do have to have that kind of interest or major minor in one of those arts areas. Um, you, now, when I said that there's no living learning com component, if you are accepted into Corcoran Scholars, you do not have to live anywhere special or there's no residence hall that's kind of tagged for Corcoran Scholar students, but uh, the art, there is an arts and design community on campus. 
where you can actually select to live there. So you could be a Corcoran Scholar student and select to live in the arts and design um, community. So you, you kind of have the option of both of those or just one, just depends on what you might want to do. And then this is also, um, like I said, a scholarship cohort. So you do receive a four-year scholarship if you're selected to be a Corcoran Scholar. But it is talent-based, like I said, where um, you're going to have to submit a portfolio or do some sort of audition to receive it. Um, Cisneros uh, Scholars is very similar to Corcoran Scholars, where there's no living and learning component, but it is often that Cisneros students do decide to live together, um, especially after their freshman year. Uh, on, at GW, we have something called affinity housing, where any students could get together and make a group of around something that they are passionate about um, and create affinity housing around it. So if you are a Cisneros scholar and you decide after your freshman year that you and the other Cisneros scholars want to create affinity housing, you can do that together. So there is kind of that, that option like the, the Corcoran scholars have to live together. Um, but Cisneros scholars, uh, the program was started by Gil Cisneros and he um, is a, I believe he's either in the House or the Senate, but he essentially gifted the money to GW um, because he recognized that it's often students that are, that identify as Latinx or from Latinx backgrounds, um, really desire a community on campus to feel supported. And he wanted to make that family community atmosphere um, a actual, program on GW's campus. And so Cisnero Scholars was born. Um, it is a wonderful way to build yourself as a leader, professional development. That, that's kind of all what Cisnero Scholars is all about, is developing students as leaders and professionals, but giving them a very um, nurturing atmosphere and family atmosphere to explore that while they're on campus. Uh, and so if you are interested in promoting leadership opportunities for um, Latinx students, Latinx communities, this is a great program to look into. And you can also combine this program with other special programs. So if you are interested in Cisneros Scholars, but also Honors or WLP, Civic House, all of those that are on the Mount Vernon campus, you can do that. Um, Corcoran Scholars, you can do that as well and combine programs. So how do you apply? Um, just a couple of quick notes about um, the general admissions process at GW. Um, we have two early decision dates, which you can see on the slide. Regular decision, early decision is a binding agreement that you agree to with your counselor, your, your family, and you. And so um, you want to really take time to decide that um, and agree to that if that's something that you're interested in. We're going to need um, your completed comment out from you, your high school transcript, um, and a letter of recommendation from a counselor and one from a teacher, and a portfolio for certain um, corporate majors as well. So all of that being said, um, how do you apply to a special program specifically to GW? Um, you're going to be on the Common App, right, submitting the Common App to apply to GW, and there is a section of the GW specific kind of questions on the Common App that says academics. Uh, and when you, you will get to a section in the academics box um, that says, do you wish to be considered for admission to residential learning community? And there's a drop down box there where you can um, select honors program, WLP, all the ones that I've listed, um, and then C. Cisneros is a separate question since you can combine two of those. So just make sure to look out for um, that question in the academic section of the GW Common Application. And uh, honors program is the only program where you have additional an additional essay to write. Um, and so just make sure that that will that pops up in your supplemental questions. And if it doesn't, just give us a call and we'll try to help you kind of troubleshoot that. So that is 
all of the information that I have for you guys. I would love to answer any questions that you might have. Um, Lee, you're welcome to kind of call out some questions to me and I can try to tackle those. Okay, and uh, first I just have one uh, friendly co correction. Uh, Gil Cisneros, our uh, benefactor and donor for that program, um, he actually lost his last election to return as a congressman, and he is now an undersecretary of defense. Oh, um, that's right. I forgot about that change. Yes, yes thanks. He's Julie. also a veteran. And yes. um, if uh, students are asking, can you be part of two programs at once? And so, um, you know, I, I think I've explained it in the chat, but you might want to talk about that a little bit more. Yeah, so any program that has a living learning component, like um, the four that I mentioned on the Mount Vernon campus, um, and I will, I'll throw the slide up again because I just think it's helpful to like visualize that. So the four in the top kind of left, you can't combine with each other. So those are programs where you live in a specific residence hall, and so there, there's not a way for you to be in West Hall and the honors program and also simultaneously live in Summers Hall to be a part of WLP. So you can't combine those, but um, and the bottom, Corcoran or Cisneros, you can combine those programs with any of the upper left programs that are living learning communities. Was that all the questions, Lee? There was uh, there was also a question about scholarships in special programs. So you might want to elaborate on that and how we do yeah. merit scholarships. Sure. So we do not offer any scholarships that are tied to special pro programs other than Cisneros or um, Corcoran. So those are scholarship programs, but the Living Learning Communities, Honors, Civic House, Politics and Values, WLP, do not have scholarships um, available to students that are a part of them, um, but we do have scholarships available to any student. So if you are a WLP, um, if you're accepted into WLP, your honors, you you have um, you're eligible for scholarships just like any other student that applies to GW. So um, you can definitely be uh, given or awarded a scholarship uh, if you're in one of those programs. It's just not going to be a, spe a specific scholarship for that program, and you don't have to submit anything additional to be eligible for scholarships. So. Um, any student that's applying to GW, the only thing they have to do to be considered for scholarships is to apply for admission. We use all the information that you give to us on the common application and in your application to um, award you scholarships or consider you for scholarships. There's nothing additional that you would need. And if you are awarded a scholarship, it would be um, listed or shown in your acceptance letter to GW. Uh, Caitlin, two more questions. Uh, one, how do the uh, honors program courses uh, vary from the standard curriculum? And um, can you talk a little bit about uh, financial aid in general at GW? Sure. So the honors courses um, are going to just be more specialized. So it might be that, um, you know, a professor is doing very specific research in an area um, and it, they're trying to combine, let's say like, you know, physics and, or like, let's say engineering and um, international affairs. And so it could be a course that's about like how, you know, people are using robotics in developing countries to create like opportunities, you know, so something like very specific um, in academic areas or where two academic areas might combine. Um, students also can be awarded special like honors research 
grant. So if, if students want to do their own research in very specific research areas, um, you can actually be awarded research money as an honor student to like, you know, my example of like robotics in developing countries, if that's something that you want to research on your own as an honor student, you're also given, um, you can also be given research money to do that uh, research on your own as well. Um, and every, I think a student has to take an honors course every semester, I believe. Um, and I think there's there's different offerings every semester depending on what the professors are researching or what they're teaching. And then as far as financial aid goes, um, we are going to be evaluating students for need-based financial aid um, uh, based on the information they provide on the FAFSA um, and the CSS profile. And so you would complete the FAFSA, which of course is the the federal application for free student aid. Um, and then the CSS profile is provided through College Board. Once you complete those two um, documents and file them and send them to GW, you'll also need to submit your tax returns. Uh, and you'll want to submit those three pieces. So CSS profile, FAFSA, and tax returns by the, the application deadline. So if it's early decision, November 5th, or if it's regular decision, just uh, January 5th, and that allows us to give you a financial aid package that um, we can release a financial aid package to you if you're accepted to GW very, very quickly after you're accepted. So you'll know exactly where you stand financial aid wise. And Caitlin, uh, there's another question that I think applies to all, most students um, who are getting ready to apply. Do students apply for admission to a specific major or do they apply to general admission to GW and then they can select their major? Yeah, that's a great question because I think it's different at every university. So at GW, we actually admit students based on the college or school that they apply to. So um, we have, um, I think it, is it seven or eight, Lee? I always forget seven or eight colleges and schools. We, we call it seven. <laughs> we call it seven. Okay. They're, Corcoran and Columbian are kind of a, a question. So we have seven different schools and colleges. Um, and let's say that you want to major in international affairs. Um, you are going to be applying to the Elliott School of International Affairs to major in that. Um, if you want to major in political science, um, you would look at all of our majors and say, oh, okay, political science is in the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences. So um, when you are applying on the Common App, you're going to select, if you're interested in political science, you would select uh, Columbian College of Arts and Sciences as your primary choice. Um, and then you can always put a secondary choice, which I recommend. So if you were interested in like international affairs, then you could put Elliott School of International Affairs as your second choice. And when we're reviewing applications, we review students in the context of the college or school that they're applying to. And so there's only so many spots in Columbian College, there's only so many spots in Elliott School of International Affairs, only so many spots in our School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. And so we are reviewing students based on where they want to go and like what program they want to be in. Your major, um, you, can, you can put your desired major on the Common App, but that's not so um, necessary to us. We're really reviewing you based on the college or school you want to apply to. So if you apply to GW and you are applying to the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences, you put your desired major as political science, then halfway through your, your year as a senior, you say, oh my gosh, I actually really want to major in biology. Biology is still in the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences, so no need to let us know, no need to like change your application anyway. Um, you, can, you can still, you know, Columbian is still your, your primary choice. Um, and if you are worried about selecting a college or school, and that changing um, while you're at GW, don't worry too much about that. Um, students change their majors and their schools and colleges all the time at every university. Um, so if you are admitted as a GW student into the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences, but you decide you actually want to 
major in business and be in our school of business, you would essentially apply to change schools when you're a student on campus. Um, and most students, as long as they're performing well academically, have no problem changing schools or colleges at GW because most likely there's a business student that wants to become a, co a Colombian student. So it's usually pretty easy to switch around. Well, if we don't have any more questions, I just want to say thank you all so much for joining um, our information session today to learn more about special programs. Obviously, this is just like a very quick kind of rundown of each program um, to get through all of them. But if you want to explore more about each one of those, um, you can always just search them on the GW website, Google them. A lot of these programs have like Instagrams, YouTube pages that are really nice to check out because often they're from the student's perspective. Um, you can also always call and email our office as well and say, hey, I'd really love to get connected to a student who was in WLP or who was in politics and values, and we can make that happen for you. So um, happy to share all of that. Also, please, please check out the Mount Vernon campus. It's a really cool space. Um, we have a virtual tour of it. There are YouTube videos. Um, you can even just Google Mount Vernon Campus GW, and there's a ton of resources there. Uh, that's a big part of being in a special program at GW is living on the Mount Vernon campus. So I would really encourage you to explore that as well. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining. And please check out more about GW and always contact us if you need anything.